I think we can get started now. Okay, so um, my name is Atiba Romani, um, business psychologist with Max Solution, and obviously here I'm joined with uh, with Mr. Samim um, Ahmed Laskia, and we're going to go through um, this Cubicles um, presentation. Um, but first, before we get into this, I'll just give you guys a quick brief about our company and who we are. So we're called Mech Solutions. We're a construction tech consultancy based in Bahrain, and we specialize in software solutions and organization development. Uh, we've been in the market for 10 years, and we operate throughout the entire MENA region. Um, in a nutshell, what we do, we basically help um, help developers, help consultants, and help uh, contractors um, streamline their business processes and, work and workflows, um, making them more efficient, productive, and safe costs. In terms of industries, we operate in construction and development, as well as oil and gas. Um, throughout the years, we've, um, we've collected quite a a decent portfolio of softwares that software solutions that we offer the market. Um, we basically targeted the ones most um, most needed, you know, based on um, based on our conversations with uh, the various clients. Um, so for the first one here, um, BIM quantity takeoff and cost management. These are the cubic cost products. We are going to look at that a bit more in detail. Um, field service management. We have Vortex, field service management software. For document management, we have Crestox. Um, for construction ERP, we have Project View. So Project View is a very strong um, construction ERP and it covers all departments on one platform. And then lastly, we have four free support softwares that you can go onto our website and download today. So as I mentioned, we're going to look at, um, we're going to examine this topic using Cubicos. So what is Cubicos? Cubicos is basically a suite of takeoff and estimation softwares that allows users to create 3D BIM models using 2D drawings, and they calculate quantities for architectural structure, for rebar, and for MEP works. And all of these softwares are connected under TBQ. So TBQ is used for the cost estimation and tender management um, part of this process, and it acts as a unifying um, platform connecting all of these other softwares under one common platform. In terms of project work stages, as you can see, Cubicos basically covers you know any, everywhere from um, from preparation through to design, pre-construction, construction. And lastly, all the way up to um, up to the use case. So it's a it's a very it's a very strong suite of software, and it, it targets you know each of these the various parts of the construction cycle or work stages. So this is just a quick rundown of our presentation. I will try to get through my section as quick as possible. So obviously we can actually see um, see the software a bit more and see how um, see how this um, this thing system works. Um, so we'll first look at um, the background of Cubicos, a brief introduction into BIM, some case studies, a technical demo. Um, then we'll, um, we'll have a small break. We'll do um, the Q&A session and then a few closing remarks. So Cubicos was created by a company called Glodon, um, headquarters in Singapore. Um, this, we've, we've got three main reasons here. And these are actually the reasons why we as a construction tech um, company went with the software. We, we, we've tried and we've analyzed many different softwares on the market, actually all of the top ones. And this is the reason why we went for, um, for Cubicos. So first things first, um, market share. So it's one of the world's five um, top construction software providers, Globin. Their research and development team is extremely um, strong. You're looking at over 7,000 um, employees and 70% make up that R&D team. And, and obviously, we have a lot of support from the likes of ACOM, Archivist, Ryder Levitt Bucknell, a lot of external consultants and contractors working together, continuously giving us feedback in order to make the software better um, each year. And then lastly, users, over 1 million QSs worldwide and estimators who already use the software. So it's very, it's very popular. In terms of strategic partners, 
Um, we all know Rix, the Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors. This software was created um, with the assistance of Rix, giving them guidance, giving the developers guidance throughout this process. Um, obviously, we have some of the big names, CIOB, um, CIDB, Malaysia, um, PAX, etc. In terms of R&D, the main R&D partners are, are listed here. Um, as you can see, Autodesk is one of the, the top R&D partners because obviously Autodesk creates software that are intended for um, design, whereas Cubicos is for quantity takeoff, etc. So they've, they've, they've kept that close tight to ensure that both software is always remain compatible with each other. Um, we obviously have Microsoft, the National University of Singapore, and the University of Maryland for more R&D. And then lastly, um, all of these softwares are building, um, building Smart certified. So Building Smart is the international standardization body for any IFC um, um, software. Here we have um, a list of a few of the clients. So as I mentioned, um, you know, we've got Acom, Arcadis, um, Goodridge Properties, Langdon Seal, Ryder Levitt Bucknell, so a few really big names here. And many of these, as I mentioned before, contribute to the further development of the software based on, based on their day-to-day -day, you know, work. Um, here in Bahrain, we've got the Ministry of Works, um, Databai, Algana, Al Nasser, and a few more. So as we know, in the last decade, or even more, to be honest, in the last maybe two decades, we've started to see a huge shift in how technology is impacting the construction industry. So, you know, for instance, we have drones now that can do a surveying of land. We have building information modeling, which we're going to look at today. And we even have 3D, 3D printing. I think a few, there's been a few projects in Dubai, if I'm not mistaken, that have already used, uh, have already used 3D um, printing technology in order to build apartments, et cetera. So, you know, so technology is really making an impact on construction. And what's driving all of this is BIM. So as we know, BIM is a is, um, building information modeling, which is a 3D digital representation of the physical and the functional characteristics of a facility. And the great thing about BIM within this um, industry is that it connects the architects, it connects the engineers and the contractors, and it provides insight into helping them plan, design, construct, and manage buildings and infrastructure. Throughout the years, there's been a huge um, evolution in quantity takeoff, moving from manual methods um, all the way to, to the uh, 3D CAD and now to BIM. Um, but what's really driving um, BIM adoption in many, uh, is the many benefits that, um, that it provides, including um, improved um, efficiency, reduction in takeoff time, construction costs, waste costs, fewer claims and litigations, um, to name a few. So these are some of the main, the main drivers of this technology. With that in mind, Cubicost has actually taken it a step further and they've added costs to the equation, thereby making um, or providing even further, um, further benefits to using BIM technology. And as a result, stakeholders are able to communicate uh, better between departments. There's better documentation and the design change and rework process, as well as reduction in errors and conflicts during construction. As you already know, there are many applications throughout the entire life cycle for BIM. Um, such as project definition, planning and pre-design, pre um, comparison of detailed plans, architectural modeling, um, quantity takeoff and cost planning, structural modeling and analysis, MEP modeling, analysis, um, collision avoidance, and many more. So it's, you know, so it's, it's, there's, there's a huge impact you know, of this technology in, and it, it, it caters to every single part of this, this life cycle. In terms of adoption, you know, we've seen a huge push in the last 10 years 
for companies or countries choosing to adopt them and actually mandate it. So here, for instance, you can see the US, um, they've been, um, it's been mandatory since 2008. Um, in Bahrain, it's predominantly used by the architects, but we're trying to push them technology here. In Qatar, it's uh, manda uh, mandatory as well for some, pro uh, for some projects. Um, Singapore, they've set out a 2010 roadmap to make at least 80% of construction industry um, using BIM by 2015, and they're doing an amazing job. For Queensland, um, any project, uh, infrastructure project worth over 50 million must use BIM. The European Union um, recommended um, BIM for all EU funded projects. And Russia, there's, um, it's mandatory as well for many large scale projects. So there's a huge, it's really a huge push worldwide. And we're seeing that coming in even to UAE as well. So for any, um, for any 40 story building, I think since 2016, um, you must use um, BIM based softwares. So this slide here looks particularly at uh, the challenges that many QSs face, but also the solutions that the software provides. So the first one here, improving takeoff time and efficiency. So the software allows for 60 to 70%, even 80% quicker takeoff time. And it allows efficient and accurate takeoffs. Um, handling project variation, various measurement rules. So the software itself has um, all of the built-in measure, um, the, actually the majority of um, methods and me measurements already built into the software. Software. So you have SMM7, POMI, NRM, etc. Um, checking resort, um, results, avoiding um, inaccuracies. So the software does four, has four unique functions um, that really helps with this process. So first one, you've got view expression. So you can basically click on any, um, on any element within the BIM model. And it can show you how the calculations has been uh, how that's being calculated. So for instance, the length, by the width, by the height, et cetera. Then you've got a really unique function here. It's called reversely check. So you can basically click on any, you know, any, um, any sum or any number within the bill of quantities. And it would point directly back to the model and show you exactly where those quantities came from. You know, this really makes it easy, especially when you're working in a team to track down, to track down those, um, those calculations. Um, then also it has a 3D function, so which allows you to easily um, visualize the computations and deductions uh, being considered. So Mr. Samimi, he's actually going to show you that in a bit more detail as well. And then lastly, standardizes the process um, of takeoff. Because as you know, many different QSs come from different backgrounds, different companies, and there's always different ways of working. So this provides a really standardized way of working together. Um, it also handles um, different file types. So you're looking at IFC files um, for Cubicos TO, which is a more advanced one. It does a uh, rivet, DWG, PDF scan, PDF JPEGs. It really covers all of these um, different file types. Um, taking off difficulty um, for complex stru structures. Um, the software calculates the quantities for any imaginable shape, you know, arcs, slopes, etc. And then lastly, tight deadlines for tendering, long hours to finish tenders, and frustration due to repetitive work. So introducing BIM takeoff really takes away and cuts out all of these unnecessary processes. It helps you complete tenders on time and to take off, um, take off elements with more or less one click of a button. So here we're just going to run through a few case studies. So we've got a few here from um, so Singapore, um, National University Hospital, Indonesia, um, TCC uh, Batavia, um, projects in Malaysia. As you can see, there's, there's more or less a theme here. Most of these um, projects or cases are in Asia, um, primarily because the headquarters of Cubicos is based in Singapore. So it's, it's basically, um, they basically covered, covered the Asian market. So with the help of us and others, we're now moving it you know, to more, a more global market, these softwares. 
Um, these are just a few last studies here. So what we did here, we basically challenged um, challenged um, construction professionals to um, yeah to a takeoff challenge, and we said, okay, for instance, we will use our software to do this project, while well, you can do it as well, and let's see who does a quicker job and a better job. So for this project using TAS and TRB, um, it took our team only 186 hours while it took the contractor um, 365 hours, which is a 49% improvement for us. For this next project, Hong Kong um, Science Park Expansion using TAS, TRB and TBQ, it took us only 60 hours while it took them 130 hours. And then for these last few projects here, you can see a vast, a huge um, jump. Um, this is one of the main reasons here is for the, the recent updates in the software. So as I mentioned before, there's many updates. Actually, every year we have two major updates in um, April and October. And so you can see a drastic change in, um, in the efficiency um, and speed of, um, of doing these um, projects. So 65%, 66 60, 72%. And as I mentioned, you know, we've even seen cases where you, where you could have um, 80, 82%, 85% um, improvement. So it really, um, really helps in that sense. So um, that is my section. So I'll, I'll pass it over to Mr. Samim because I'm sure you all are waiting to, um, to have a look at Cubicos. So let's take it from there. Mr. Samim? Yes, Mr. Adibel. I'll just start on my screen. Okay. Okay, so thank you. Thank you, Mr. Atiba, for a great introduction. Um, just, just to make sure if everyone can see my screen. Yes, it's clear. Okay, Mr. Ramis, thank you so much. All right, so hello everyone. My name is Shami Ahmed. I am a technical consultant with Max Solutions. So thank you, thank you for joining us today um, in our webinar of understanding beam cost management. So my part of presentation is uh, basically the technical demonstration of software. So as we as we all know in the digital transformation of construction industry, as mentioned by Mr. Atiba, the, the role of BIM is quite emerging at the moment. So when we talk about BIM, it's the foundation of technologies like uh, AI, for instance, BI, autonomous construction, big data, internet of things, you name it. So what I'm trying to make uh, as a point here is if we don't have a 3D visualized model with all the information in it or associated with it, all other technologies which are there are of less value. So other technologies can still be used, but in absence of a proper coordinated uh, 3D digital model, they have got less value. So in my presentation, I'm gonna take you through a BIM-based um, centralized estimating and quantity take of software. Uh, my objective with this software is to show you how efficiently and uh, correctly we can do quantity takeoff and cost estimation. So as mentioned by Mr. Atiba, the, the takeoff software task that we can see on the screen has got all the method of measurements or the rule of measurements are embedded in the software itself. So we are talking about NRM2, SMM7, POMI, Indian standards, and so many more. Um, so th this was a little background of uh, what we're going to look at. So I'm not going to spend much time on that. So, but all certainly you know, just to give you a view of how how we link the beam to the quantities and cost, and then cost to cost data, which will give us a quick overview of how the system works. So before I move forward, we we'll just look to conduct a quick poll to understand how you currently work. So I'll keep the uh, I'll keep the polls open for two minutes. Let me just get it on the screen. Okay, so I'm launching the poll now. It's gonna be on your screen for two minutes. So please feel free to answer the questions that are available on your screen. And uh, yeah, I'll take it from there.
Okay, we're starting to get a few responses now. Thank you all. And just a reminder, um, if you have any questions, um, you know you can also um, you can leave them in the Q and A section. And at the uh, end of the presentation, we'll have a Q and A um, session where we can all you know discuss and we can go through these questions. So we'll try to cover as many as we can. Okay, it's looking really good. We've got about 20 seconds left. <laughs> Thank you all for, um, for participating. Okay, so I think the poll is um, has ended, and actually, um, these are actually quite impressive. Um, and I can say I can say for a fact here that um, this batch of um, well, I guess professionals here, um, you guys actually differ from from the norm. Um, normally, we would find a lot of for for drawings, for instance, we would find a lot of um, projects using PDF. So here we can we're seeing a lot of CAD use, which is which is quite impressive. Um, takeoff, Excel, AutoCAD. Um, this is quite typical. As you know, as as BIM becomes more popular, you know we're starting to see a movement. But yeah, so far we can see these are all um, these are all quite representative of the of the overall population. Um, so thank you all, thank you all for um, participating. Yes, yes. All right. Thank you, Mr. Adiba, for announcing the result with us. Um, okay, so without further ado, let's get right into the software. So this is task here, as you can see on my screen. So as an overview, I'm going to begin with a quick walkthrough of the software, and then, then we'll look at the B model, and then we can get quantities from the B model and proceed with my estimating software, which is the other software. And uh, finally, we'll get some reports out of it. So we'll be running a Q&A session as mis uh, mentioned by Mr. Atiba again. So you know, by, by the end of this webinar, you will be able to uh, get your answers. And uh, in the Q&A feature, which, is, uh, which can be seen in your UI screen, so you'll be able to type in your questions there. So we'll do our best to address as many questions as possible during the q and session at that. We might not, however, cover all the questions because of the time constraint. So we'll respond to the remaining questions by email um, after the webinar. Okay, so about the compatibility of the software, as uh, Mr. Tiva mentioned, that it supports CAD file, it supports vector PDF, scan PDF, JPEG files, and beam models, which can be a Revit file or an IFC file. So just to give you an overview of the workflow, workflow of the software. So the operation of the software goes in line with uh, quantity surveyors workflow. So we start with axis grid, we start, and then we go for um, column, wall, and other elements, so on. So basically when we have a CAD drawing, the software identifies all the elements from the drawing itself and it builds, up, it, it builds up the beam model automatically. But then when you have a PDF file or PDF drawing, the software identifies the elements based on the, uh, based on the define and trace method, which is like an extra step to build up the beam model. But then if you have a Revit or IFC file, a federated or a single, single beam model, all we need to do is just import the file check some element scales, and then we can straight away proceed to the quantities by one click calculation. Okay, so that was about a quick background of what we're gonna look at today. So now let me proceed with the software interface. 
So over here, we have got different um, tabs under each one of them. As you can see, different tools are available and this are quite typical uh, as uh, some of the CAD software is available in the market. So it's, it's, it's quite useful for the CAD users as well. The 2D, 2D uh, tools are available, 3D tools are available, everything arranged under each of the steps. Now in here, then we have got the option bar, so we can choose on which floor we're going to work, which element we're working on, and all of this stuff. Now on the right hand side, we have the drawing manager. So what we do, we basically import our drawings here. And then for each of these drawings, we can then um, we can then select the layers, we can turn off the layers right here in the layer manager. So if I break it down, it shows me all the different element layers. So I can turn off and on in case if I want. On the left side, I have got the navigation bar. So all my elements are um, arranged here. So as far my uh, desired function is, I'll choose one of them and then I'll let the software identify for, uh, for the element and it will build up the beam model as I mentioned. As soon as the software identifies these elements, it, it lists out under element list. And then for each of these elements, we can edit their properties or we can view their properties under attribute editor. Now we have got three primary tabs. So we start with modeling and then we go to BOQ and finally we can get some reports out of it. Now in the software, we have got similar to you know any other CAD software, we have got the status bar, which is the software status bar and then application status bar right over here. And then obviously the main screen or the middle screen is the working space where you build up your beam model. Okay, so before we go for modeling, what we tend to do is when you initiate a project, we set up the levels of that particular project. So you can, you can actually add as many buildings or zone as you want uh, based on your project. And then you can add up floors by clicking on insert floor and delete floors, and then you can edit these floor names uh, accordingly. And then you can set up for each of these floor the height. And based on that, the software would then uh, calculate the elevation for each of these floor. But you have got the option for setting up a reference floor, which will be basically the natural ground level, existing ground level that you want to put in here. So that is the option available here. But uh, nevertheless, you can change this data at any point of time in other features as well. Now, if you have got number of typical flows, then you can put in that over here. So this particular sheet works same as um, Excel or any other uh, spreadsheet. Once you are done with the setting of the floor, then you can set up the grade settings. So you have got the concrete grade, you have got concrete categories, different concrete categories are there, lightweight, self-compacting and so on similar thing for formwork type so for each element you can set up that particular properties in it so if you've got mortar grade similar thing goes for mortar category so you can choose from there uh, this particular section is quite important so what it does is that if you want a quick estimation of steel against per cubic meter of concrete then you can provide the steel ratio over here for each of these particular element and then at the end of this calculation you will get an approximate estimation of steel quantity. But if you are looking for a detailed um, calculation of steel with a bar bending schedule and all of these details, then we have got separate software for that, which is called TRB. So you can use that one that basically builds up everything in 3D, the rebars in 3D. So you will basically be able to visualize what you're doing and where are the main bars, steer ups and so on you're putting in and you get all the details in that software. Uh, once you're done with this setup, then you can copy to other floors in case if that setting applies to other floors as well. All right, so once I'm done with the project setting, then I can go ahead and start modeling some elements. So uh, let's start with one element, let's say column. And the software has got three simple steps to build up the beam model and it automatically identifies. So we have got the peak side line and then we have got the peak level and auto identify. So um, in a while, I'm going to do this operation. So peak sideline, I'm going to pick sideline of one of these elements. So we're looking at column by click for confirmation, pick level. There you go. And then we have got auto identify. So in third simple step, the software identifies all the columns from the drawing and it builds up the 3D model. So we can now look at it in a dynamic or 3D view. 
so you can basically turn on the 2d drawing to just make sure that all the columns are in position the lines are identified exactly in place according to its shape now if you can swivel around you can pivot and check you know where are those lines so as you can see the software has got different shapes that are identified by the software from the 2d lines itself now if you are looking at uh, uh, the height of these columns, the floor setting. So we are currently working on ground floor. If we refer back to our ground floor, we can see that we've got a height of 3.3 meter, which means that each of these elements has got a height of 3.3 meter. Now, you can also adjust these elevations and some other settings right from the properties windows. Now, you might have noticed all of these elements got listed in here. Now, for each one of them, you can either select from the model or you can select the text, which is the element list over here. And then you can change the properties, the sectional weight, sectional height, and many different properties. And then if you want to make some adjustment in the elevation, so you, you go ahead here and you say, okay, uh, for the top elevation, um, I don't know, maybe I wanna go one meter down. So one meter, so it goes down one meter. So we can do all of these adjustments. Now, then a few other tools available, like for setting up, slope of column so you can provide the angle in green color text that is editable so you can provide the angle of inclination and it takes that particular shape so that option is there all right so a few other tools are available but i'm not going in much details about the editing functions so let's proceed with the next element uh, which is wall so again three simple steps similar to uh, what we did in column so I'm going to turn on my architectural drawing, which is right over here. Just to save time, basically, I imported all the drawings um, beforehand, just to show you how it works. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pick the sideline of wall, and then pick doors and windows, and then auto-identify. So in three simple steps, I got my walls done. So I've got my columns, I've got my walls in position just from the 2D drawing, and I can swivel around and check, you know, everything is in position or not. And if you have noticed, all of these walls are identified and listed over here according to their thicknesses. So I've got 200 mm wall, 60 mm wall, 100 mm wall. Now, if you want to look at which are these particular walls, so you can choose from the selection window here. So let's say I'm going to look at 100 mm wall. So I can see in the 3D view all these uh, 100 mm thick walls. And if I want to make any changes for that prop, uh, properties of 100mm wall, I can go ahead and do that under the attribute editor, as I mentioned before. Now, a few options of um, uh, modification or uh, different shapes which are available here. So if I want to set, let's say, sloping wall, I can provide the angle of inclination and then I can you know, define in which direction I want the slope. So let's say in the outer direction, so it takes that shape as well um arch shape wall so again you know you can set up arch shape so all you need to do is just pick up a point and provide the height and it takes that arch shape so different options are available there all right so once we're done with wall so let's go ahead with the next element uh, by the way there are many other elements which are like stiffeners corbel and different options are available uh, as per our requirement we can use them but for the webinar or session i'm just going to go ahead with the normal elements or just the common elements in other in other words so doors and windows so what we do is in doors and windows is that we have the three options that we already talked about but then we have got one extra option which is element schedule so normally we get the schedule of doors and windows in either excel format or in cad file or in pdf file so all of these three different file formats are uh, can be imported in the software and it will identify automatically all the data from the schedule itself. So let's go ahead and look at one schedule. So I've got a doors and windows schedule over here. All I need to do is I'll, I'll just hide the walls and columns for now. And this is my doors and windows schedule. So I will go ahead and say, okay, identify the doors and windows from the schedule all the way down. Okay, and right click for confirmation. So the software identified all the doors and windows, the names, the type, and width multiplied by height. But in case if you have got different um, format of 
doors and windows schedule, then you can choose you know, for each column the name, width, height, as per your requirement. Now, similar thing, the software identified the windows as, uh, as well. We can import an Excel file, like I said before. So I'm just gonna hit identify here. The software identifies all of these different names, types, properties, everything in detail from the schedule. Okay, so now let's go back to our plan. So I've got my plan here. And now at this point, what I need to do is I need to just let the software know uh, the, the, the name or label of each of these doors and windows. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit label and then auto identify. So the software identifies all the doors and windows and it plays in positions. So we can see in 3D view, there it is. Now if I turn on my walls, my columns, everything is in positions. Now the software identifies the 3D, 3D, 3D model right from the 2D lines, as you can see. Now, based on the properties that we imported in the software, the software automatically matches with the name and it applies those properties in it, so which is quite powerful tool. Now, let's have a quick look at the properties window. So if I choose any of these doors, I've got all the details here, so I can choose or change all of these different categories. So if I would like to go for some categories, I can say entrance door, security, roller, fire. And then in terms of materials, if you want to categorize based on material, you have got wooden, glass, plastic, and different types available for doors. Similar thing goes for windows. So you've got different uh, types, categories, sliding windows and stuff like that. Metal, wooden, glass, plastic. Now, if you would like to adjust some um, elevation or the, or the sill level or sill height from the floor level, you can do that as well. So just select that particular window and then you can choose from the properties. So at this point, it shows me, okay, it's 900 millimeters. So I can say instead of 900, it should be 500. So it goes down. Now this setting either you can do, either you can do manually or the software identifies automatically based on your or, uh, or on your schedule of doors and windows. So in your schedule of doors and windows, you have got, uh, if you have got the height above the floor, the software automatically identifies those data and it plays in, in, in each of these windows. So these functions are available in terms of properties. But then if you want to do some modifications, you have got a few tools over here, so you can use them. But obviously for, the, uh, for this session, I'm not going to go into much details on that. Um, a few other options for door windows, wall opening, V1 driven windows, bay window, normal, lintel. So let's have a quick look at lintel. Now, what's so great about lintel identification is that there is a particular tool which identifies everything and automatically applies in it. So let's go ahead and say, um, a, a, we can create, let's say, a rectangular lintel, although you can go for irregular shape, which means that you will be just choosing that 2D drawing of irregular shape and it will build up 3D model from the drawing, then which, which you can do from the drop down of here. So that is there. Now let's go ahead and click rectangular lintel. I'm just sticking to the uh, default setting. So we've got the section width, height, length at the starting point, so extension, and then extension in the end point, which is 250. So we are happy with that. Now let's go ahead and use one of the powerful tools, which is uh, defining the, uh, the the opening size. So what is the limitation? So I'm going to say, OK, 0 millimeter to 3 uh, three meter. So within that opening, the software will cover up all of these openings. And another important point here is that the software identifies these openings and applies the lintel only on non-concrete wall. In case if you have assigned any of these walls as concrete wall, like for the lift or other um, uh, other walls, then the software basically doesn't apply the lintel in there. So it automatically identifies all of these intelligent uh, features. Now, Nietzsche's skylight, few other elements there. When it comes to beam, then it's again, three simple steps, fixed side line, fixed level or to identify. So just to save time, I did that. Similar thing goes for slab. So to save time, I did that again. You can, uh, I'll just quickly show you what you can do in terms of uh, modification of slab. So you can open, uh, create some openings. So let's go ahead and say split. And I'm gonna say, okay, a circular split maybe somewhere here. And then, okay, so if I delete that, then it creates an opening. So based on your 
requirement, you can create openings, do a lot of edits um, in terms of modification of slab. That is about some elements, but again, in the um, draw tool, you can then modify that by providing some sample, uh, sorry, slopings of particular uh, slab. So you can provide the elevation in all the corners. You can then uh, make some arch slab for the domes, you know, for conical shapes, spherical shape for different shapes uh, of slab. You can go ahead with that. You can provide some variable sections for some kiln slab and other. So all of these different features are available there. All right, so let's quickly move on to the next element, which is steel structure. So in case if you have got a steel uh, structure building, then you can go ahead and use these elements available here. So you have got a composite column, steel composite beam, or slab. So Samim? Yes. Yeah, sorry for interrupting. Um, some of the participants, they're having some, um, some difficulties hearing your voice. So if you okay. can speak up a bit more. And, and uh, um, attendees, please, um, if, you, if, if there's any technical issues, if you can't hear a voice, if you require that we speak a bit slower, et cetera, you know, just, just feel free to, um, to leave a message in the chat bar. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, I hope now it's much more clear than before. All right, so I'll move ahead and uh, uh, with the remaining elements. So uh, we were talking about steel structures. So we have got composite columns, beams, and slabs. So let's go ahead and look at one of them. So let's say composite beam. So I can go ahead with different shapes, or I can just go ahead with steel beam uh, rather than going for composite one. So I've got different shapes available here. And then if you go for just uh, the standard shapes, which are you know, quite useful in the, in the industry, then you can have a lot of standard codes available here for different steel structure elements. And then you can define their sizes just by providing the value here. And as soon as you are done with this setting, then you can apply that particular beam in your position um, of, of, of um, uh, the element. So that option is available for each of these steel structures. Similar thing for slab, composite slab. So if you look at the composite slab, you have got different shape standard sizes are available. You can provide the dimensions and place them in its position. Now, when it comes to staircase, we are talking about uh, you know, complex shapes or straight flights, different types of staircase are available. So if I go ahead and hit parametric staircase, so the software already has got some, uh, some standard shapes uh, inbuilt in the software. So you can use one of them. So you've got the, uh, for instance, standard double run. So you can provide the number of steps, um, length of landing slab, width of steer, different values here, height of riser, depth of tread, uh, width of floor slab. And if you have got some beams, you can provide those values. All these green color data are editable. So as soon as you're done with this setting, then you can place your um, staircase in its position. But obviously for this project, I don't have a complex shape, it's just a straight flight over here. So I built it with that. But you have got another option if you want to do some, um, diff, you know, if you want to define some shapes by yourself. So you can go ahead and say composite slab, and then it, uh, then it prompts out this particular window. So in this window, you'll be able to provide some settings here, um, landing beam, if you want to turn on that, of that, and then some railing settings. So if you want to have railing in all sides, you can turn on all of that. You can provide the height of railings and stuff like that. Um, then other settings for that particular staircase can be done under the properties. So settings like width of flight, depth of tread, height of riser, and all other different settings. Once you are done with the setting, then you can just place your particular staircase based on your 2D drawing in the drawing itself. Uh, so that is how we do the custom staircase. So that's an alternative option. If you don't want to go for the standard shapes, you can go ahead with that as well. Uh, spider flight stairwell different uh, options are available you have got them the finishes so the software has got some intelligent tools uh, which makes it quite easier for qs estimation um, engineers to do the finishes uh, based on different shapes now if you if you have got finishes in different shapes for the suspended ceiling or something like that you can do all of these different shapes in the software itself now, it again applies the similar 
similar properties. So you can you can go ahead and use the tools finish schedule, which works similarly like doors and windows, just to save time. I did that before. So what I see on my element list is that as soon as I did the identification from the schedule, then it all identified the rooms from the schedule. And for each of these rooms, then it also identified the attached element to that particular room. So I've got floor finish, waterproofing, scarting, wall finishes, ceiling finish, suspended ceiling. Each one of them then has got different settings. So you can choose, let's say, thickness and different other properties. So you can change them from here. You can use one uh, particular type of floor finish or any other finishes for different uh, rooms or multiple floors just by clicking on that particular uh, icon. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how we can apply finishes in one click in a room and we go, go ahead with the calculation. So I will delete, let's say, this particular finish for bedroom and all I need to do is just go to bedroom and one click and the software applies the finishes into that particular room. So we have got the scarting, we have got wall finishes, the opening the software identified and you know deducted that particular area. It considered the sides of column, the soft fit of beam, the side of beam, everything in detail. So you don't have to literally do all of these things by yourself because the software automatically identifies. Now, you might be wondering, okay, how does the software know there's a beam coming up here? So let's have a look at beams that we did before. And I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay, turn on that adjacent floors and I'll hide the walls for now, just to have a better look. So we can see there is a beam right here and which the software identified for this particular room. So it's all automatic. Now I'm gonna go back to my current floor and this is basically about the finishes of uh, the, the, the floor and wall and skirting. Now, if I have got different shapes for suspended ceiling, then I can do that as well. So if I go ahead with suspended ceiling and I say, um, I have got some, um, you know, difference in elevation for a particular um, suspended ceiling. So let's consider this particular area, which is toilet area. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna split it up into two, let's say just a rectangular split, though it can be any shape. Now I will, create this or I will separate this particular part into another part. So say this part is going a little bit up, the height is three meter, but then the remaining part remains the similar height. So we have got a difference, side difference here. Uh, now I need to call this one something else as it has got different height. Okay. Now all I need to do is to define some elevation or to define some uh, you know, vertical elements, I can go ahead and hit define vertical elements. And then I would specify the edge. Uh, let me provide the height. Okay. And I'm gonna specify the edges. Which is somewhere here. Okay, it's right over there. Okay. And then what it does is that it basically identifies all of these edges and it builds up the uh, edge, the vertical shape. Oops, some of them went up because of the selection of wrong edge. I had to select this edge rather than that edge, but anyway. So this is basically the concept. So you can define the vertical elements, you can define the height adjustments, all of these different types of shapes you can build up. Okay, so that's about the finishes. I will just move on with uh, next elements. Okay, so we have got few prefabrication structures. So we've got components like PPVC, so you can just put in those. Uh, the, the quantification for those are also available in the software. And as soon as you hover over, it shows you exactly how to do it in a little video format. So it's quite yeah, useful for the user. And then we will straightway go ahead with the foundation. So. As of now, we were working on ground floor, but now I will switch to the foundation floor. So if I go to foundation floor, I'm gonna turn on the foundation drawing here. And what I need to do is, I need to essentially do the similar steps, except for the fact that as the, as the drawing is not a CAD file, it's a PDF drawing, as you can see. So we need to perform an extra step for that because there is no color, no layer of any element in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit 
pet foundation because we have got pet foundation in the drawing and uh, the extra step is you just need to define the pet foundation size so you go ahead and say a pet foundation and then a pad rectangular pad below that and you can provide the sectional length width height uh, in the properties window and then you can place in it in, in, in its position so we've got f1 here so i'm gonna just quickly uh place in that okay so right here f1 we've got another f1 we've got another f1 so this is it now once we're done with the foundation um the next element could be blinding so uh before we go to that we'll just quickly have a look at rough foundation so rough foundation is again similar you just provide a thickness and you go ahead and draw the rough foundation according to your um, drawing now you can provide the sloping just like i uh, explained in the slab so you can do that for slope edges as well for this rough foundation let's say you can define the slope edges something like this angle of inclination you can provide the uh, the length of that particular connection you have, you have got then the elevation the height and this side as well so every green color data is editable so you can provide all of these details and then you can define those shapes in the rough foundation now once we are done with the foundations i'm going to go ahead with blinding so in blinding, what happens is that it again has got one intelligent features. And what's so great about this is that it automatically identifies and applies everywhere, wherever you want. So I have got blinding here, thickness, I'm just sticking to 100 millimeter. And then all I need to do is just go ahead and say where I want to arrange that blinding. So I'm saying, okay, pet foundation, select the drawing. And then I can provide the extension in all the four sides. So extension, let's say it's 100 millimeter on all sides. So what it does is that it basically identifies all the foundation and it applies that particular blinding below them automatically as soon as I press OK. So as you can see, all my foundation has got blinding now. So it's just too simple step for that. Now, when it comes to excavation, there is a specific function called auto-generate excavation. And this basically takes away a lot of hustle of going through, you know, elevations and stuff and getting to know where to do what. Uh, it, it generates the excavation automatically based on the um, height or elevations that you provide. So we have got three options here. You can go ahead with pit excavation. You can go ahead with trench heavy excavation. So let's go ahead with pit excavation for now. I have got the unit depth. You can define that uh, working space, all of these different settings. You can provide then sloping angle here. Uh, if you want to have a slope something like this and then you can go ahead and say okay slope position where you want and you have two options for defining this so you you let the software automatically identify the particular element and define the excavation or you do it manually manually by one click of each uh, on, on each of these foundations so we're going to go ahead with auto identification and let's say okay so what it does is that it basically identifies i'm sorry about that i'm going to perform that again um, manual mode, sorry, pit excavation, okay, auto mode. So in auto mode, the software identifies from the, okay, oops, I think I did that before, so yeah, there it is. Now, it's, it's, it identified all the, all the foundations and it automatically applies according to the working space that you provided and all of these different functions, it identifies and builds up the excavation quantities for you but obviously it looks quite higher because i've got a i've got a um, basement floor which is four meter high uh, which is not be the case but that's why it looks quite higher but again the concept is that you can provide different slopes and it does identification automatically it calculates the excavation quantity it calculates the disposal quantity it then calculates the backfill quantity all by one click calculation now the next question could be what if I have got a different um, elevations um, from the, uh, let's say, topographical or contour map? So what you need to do is you need to adjust the uh, ground floor, uh, natural ground floor elevation. And based on that, the software will be identifying the top elevation as well as the bottom elevation. So you can do all of these different adjustments in the model itself. And this gives you a visual view of how it looks like. So you are uh, okay with that and then you go ahead with the calculation it calculates all of these different um, calculations automatically now that is about excavation now there are a few other elements available so when we talk about uh, something like railing copying carb 
and then roof in roof then you have got different options available which are you can provide slope you can provide the curl edges uh, you can then go ahead and say uh, okay you know define those slopes for multiple number of um, of of, of uh, roof now you can do that by batch select which will give you a quite uh, impressive view of slopes that is there now as you can see a few other elements are there not going in details on that uh, custom element this is quite useful for the interior work so for fit out work so if, if you have got different uh, let's say furniture or or um, bathtub or, or similar things so you can go ahead with custom point and you can create different shapes from parametric custom and and, and then you have also got the option of irregular shapes which you can um, pick in from the from the 2d drawing and it will build up automatically that particular shape so that option is available for interior works now you have got then custom quantity and this is quite useful for the users who are uh, who have been involved with, with 2d uh, software so 2d quantity takeoff or estimation software so what it does is that it basically gives you options of calculating the linear length area volume and counts so this is quite um, you know, famous at the moment uh, when it comes to quantity takeoff using uh, 2D softwares. So you can go ahead and say, okay, I want to calculate some area. So what it does is that it gives you different options here. You can go ahead with different shapes. And then all you need to do is just drag that particular area or just draw a line based on what shape that you want. And it will give you in uh, the plan view a particular area um, calculation, but at the same time, it will give you in the bar over here. But this calculation is again reflected to your quantity. So you'll be able to see in the quantity breakdown this area as well. You can name this area um, something like, you know, if you are if you are going for landscaping or external work or you know similar things, so you can name them as 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 you want. Uh, if you want to work only with 2D drawings, you don't want the beam model and stuff like that. So you can go ahead and use this function for the entire floor plan. So this option is quite, quite flexible. So you have got either uh, you want to go for the beam model or you want to do everything 2D. So you can do it 2D using this particular function. You have then got the counts. So number of, um, for instance, number of wash basins. So you can just I mean, pick some wash basins, choose the count over here. And then you can go ahead and say, okay, if you want to find out some length, you can do that as well. So all these different options are available for the uh, user who likes to do things in 2D. Okay. So this this is basically about the modeling part, and then then um, you know one of the very powerful tool is that we can copy all the elements that we did here to other floors. So let's have a quick look at that. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to my ground floor back again, and I'll turn on my ground floor drawing so i've got the model here okay now what i need to do is that i need to copy all of these elements to other floors so that i don't have to go through you know each of these steps for the next floor in case if i have got typical floors so i don't have to worry about that but even if i have got some some modifications that needs to be done in the next floor i can go switch to that floor and then i can i'll be able to do all these modifications just like we did before so i'm going to go ahead and copy all of these elements so i will select all the elements for this floor and i will say copy to other floor so i can copy that to uh, let's say as an example one two three four floors so oh i did that before so i'm just going to overwrite that so what it does is that it basically copies all of these elements uh, the 3d view as well as the uh, properties and element list everything in details and then you will be able to modify in the next floor just by switching to next floor from here so that option is there but in case if you want to just copy only the element list as well as the properties associated with that you can just use this particular copy function so you don't have to do the uh, copying of all the 3d model as well so you, and this is quite useful for uh, doors and windows or finishes if you want the same properties in the next floor you can just copy from uh, each floors and if we have noticed that we have got another option, which is copy from other floor. So you can copy elements from other floor as well. So it's not just, you know, one way of sending something to other, but we can also pick it up from other floor as well. All right. So 
sorry, uh, we did that. Now, now we can turn on our complete model that we worked on so far. So I'll turn on all the elements that we did right from here. Okay, so now just to conclude the modeling part, I would say that uh, for the CAD and Excel users, they can easily get their hands on. It goes really, really handy with them because of the software interface and the shortcut keys, which are similar to AutoCAD. So we have got EX for extend, DR for cream, let's say L for line, and all of these different shortcut keys are similar to, uh, similar to AutoCAD. So AutoCAD users, it really goes handy with, uh, uh, with for, for that. Now, you used, uh, there is one particular function which has recently been introduced to the software and it's quite useful for the 2D identification again. And which is, for instance, if I would like to create a, a okay, so I go back to my column only. Uh, if I would just like to create a wall or something from the 2D line itself. So what I need to do is I just need to go to that particular line. Let's say this particular line, there's a wall here, although we don't have one, just as an example. So I'll go to wall and I will pick up that particular line. And I need to make sure that which wall that I'm defining. So at the moment, 200 mm thick wall. So it automatically identifies that 2D CAD line and it builds up the wall. So it has got the flexibility of which orientation you want. Do you want on that side, this side or in the middle? So center line, external or internal side. So you can define this and then just right click so it generates a wall automatically. So if you want to do 2D, um, um, by 2D lines, you can go ahead with by cat lines as well. So that option is there, quite flexible. Uh, that is about the modeling part. Um, just, so, so just to round the talk off, okay, so far we looked at the B model. Now let's proceed with the calculation. So. Uh, we did the modeling, we identified all the elements, and um, now it's time to go for calculation. So in calculation, we are going to look at some settings. So we have got measurement settings here, measurement rules here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit measurement settings. And what it does is that it basically uh, give you the, the, the ability to choose and check the different calculation rules for different elements. Now you can go ahead and check for each of these elements. If you want to make some changes, you can then go ahead in the option and make the changes. For instance, if I'm looking at wall finishes, so I've got a method for calculating top elevation of finish to interior wall finish. I've got if the suspended, um, you know, at 50 millimeter higher than the original elevation, or you can go ahead with 100 millimeter and so many other options are available. And if you don't want to add up any other elevation, so you can go ahead with the first option. These all options are again from the clauses of method of measurement that you chose. So this is basically the method of measurement um, snap in other words. So if you if you refer back to your project, so we have got UA principle of measurement international for this project at the moment, but you can choose whichever method of measurement that you want, and it will automatically apply that particular setting for calculation here. So you don't have to then worry about different calculation rules and setting up that. And once you set up with this setting, if you made some changes, then you can just export this in CSV format. You can then import back in your future projects if you want. It just works like template. Now let's go ahead and click on measurement rules. So what it does is that it basically gives you the relation between two different elements. And what I mean by that is it gives you the, um, the setting for, uh, let's say, deductions between two elements. So if I go ahead with col column wall, I have got different options available. Uh, just like before. So I can choose all of these different functions. So if I, let's say, looking at slab, and then what I need to do is I can go ahead and choose one of these options. Again, these are based on the method of measurements. And for this PTB slab, it says deduction of BM from in-situ PTB slab from volume of in-situ slab. So I've got different options. If the concrete grade BM is similar to that, then deduct, otherwise don't deduct. So different options are there. Now, for PTB slab, I have got again breakdown of different types of PDB slab, and I can choose all these different options and set up that before I do the calculation. But you don't have to worry about that because it's from method of measurement. So at the moment, I'll just stick to the uh, default setting. Now, once you are done with this one, you can just go ahead with calculations. So just by one click, you can do the calculation either for floor or for 
you know, this also checks if you have got any um, any adjustment that needs to be done. Uh, so you've got the auto process options, which gives you different settings. If you want to make some changes in the settings in terms of deductions and stuff. So you can go ahead and press OK. OK. Um, I will just. Uh, I will just do the setting here quickly before I calculate because it shows me, OK, the corrections to be uh, maintained. Now, at this point, you can do floor wise calculation. And you can do uh, for a particular element at any point of time, let's say you just build up the wall and you want to do the calculation, you can do that as well. So let's go ahead for the all floors and press OK. So what it does is that the software identifies all these different elements that we built up in the 3db model. And it does calculation uh, considering the deductions, applying all these different calculation rules, and it gives us the data out of it. So at this point, we recommend that if if you if you would like to run the calculation much faster than this, then you can use in your company you have got different computers, so you can use different RAM memories just by connecting them. We have got one option for that here, just to show you. Um, if you go to options, then you have got the cloud computing. So if you use cloud computing, it will basically utilize all the different systems available in your in your company just for calculation, just to run the calculation a little bit faster than a few seconds. Okay, so once we're done with the calculation, we have got three options for viewing quantity. We have got view expression, view quantity by category, and view quantity. So I'm going to go ahead with view quantity by category. If I look at the quantities uh, by view quantity by category, it gives me the breakdown of different quantities of different elements. So for instance, if we are looking at column, we have got the floor, materials, concrete weight, entity type, name, different shapes, width, height, and then volume of concrete, area of formwork, how many numbers are there for a particular uh, type of column? We have got then the weight of rebar and the gate. So we have got filter options for each one of them that is useful. And then you can you can turn on and off what you want in the list. So for instance, if I want to get rid of the um, section shape, but then I want to include, for instance, um, remarks. So I can then say, OK, so it takes the it, it, it gets uh, it take away that particular selection that I made and then it also adds up what I added up now that option is quite useful now if you go to if you go to other settings which is the element range so you'll be this is again basically the filter option so you can choose which elements that you want to see on the screen you can export it into Excel you can set this one as a template for future projects as well now once we are done with that we can then turn on the subtotal for looking at subtotal for each of this type of column. We can do that as well. We can then do one quick check for the calculation. So how do you do that? So now at this point, we are, let's say, in the ground floor. And for one of this volume, let's say this one, I am quite confused from where this volume of concrete came. So what I need to do is I need to just go ahead and say reversely check in model. So what it does is that it basically takes me back to the model and it shows me in details where the quantities came from. So if I switch between these calculations, it shows me in 3db where the um, quantities came from. You know, in detail 3db, I can swivel around and check which is that particular column in which position. So these kind of cross check can be done from the, uh, from the calculation um, X spreadsheet as well. Now, this is about the detailed categorized quantity view, but then if you want to see the view quantity, which the name again suggests, you know, just if you want to look at quick quantity of any of these elements, you just click on that and it shows you the detailed breakdown of quantities. You can again export to Excel and do the other settings as well. Now, this particular setting is quite useful when you are, you know, cross-checking your calculations. So basically what it does is that it gives you a detailed breakdown of calculation so if i select this wall for instance say b expression it gives me a detailed breakdown of how did the computational calculation took place now to arrive at quantity of 3.46 the software multiplied the length multiplied by height thickness of wall and then it made the deduction for door window deduction for column beam and concrete lintel so all in detail now, you know the calculation, how did the software do that in details from this particular list. 
Now, if you want to look in more detail in 3D view, then you go ahead and click on 3D deduction and it takes you to another, another window. And in this window, you'll be able to see uh, in 3D view, how did the calculation took place? So this is my original quantity. I can scroll around and check, okay, this is my wall. I'm okay with that. And then I have got deduction of doors, deduction of different windows, deduction of all these different columns, deduction of beam and deduction of concrete lintels in different locations. So everything in details, so you can visually verify your calculations uh, by going to 3D deduction option. And you can, this is also quite useful for documentation purposes or presenting it to the client and stuff like that. So that's, that's really, really useful. Now, if you would like to do some measurement in 3D view, you can go ahead with this particular option. So it's quite useful while you're modeling or at any point of time, you wanna cross check some, some uh, uh, modeling measurements that you did. So you can, let's say you can do line measurements or area measurements. So if I pick two points, uh, for instance, for this wall, I wanna know the thickness of that wall. It shows me over here that the wall has got a thickness of 200 millimeter, which is correct. So that's how we do the 3D measurements. At this point, we can have different other options like lock unlock. So you'll be able to lock the model and share with your team. They won't be able to make any changes in the calculation, although they can make some modification in the model, but that won't impact on the that won't have any impact on the on the calculation. Now there is another lock function available, which is for the 2D drawings. And what it does is that it basically allows you whether uh, whether to do some edits in the 2D drawing or not. So if I just turn or unlock that, then I'll be able to pick up. So I'll just close this window and I'll be able to pick up different 2D lines or I can draw different 2D lines just by going to draw CAD line. And I say, okay, I just wanna draw something like column side line. I can draw different 2D lines just by unlocking the 2D drawings. So 2D works can be done in the software as well, which is quite useful. Uh, for 2D works. Now you can unlock and lock that. Once you lock that, you won't be able to perform that particular function. So that's about the modeling calculation and uh, and, and and the 3D measurement and all of different stuffs. So with this, I would uh, I would like to conclude the first part of my presentation, and uh, we'll have a five minutes break now, and uh, I will see you after five minutes. Thank you so much.
Hello everyone, welcome back. In this part of uh, presentation, I'll be introducing my estimation and tender management software uh, using both the contractor and consultant version of the software. Because obviously we know our participants are from different backgrounds, from contracting companies, from consultants and developers as well. So as an overview, if you're looking at my screen, I have got TBQ software here. So uh, TBQ is basically a cost estimation software and it works in a central platform. So it, it sits on your server of your office or it can sit in, a, in your individual PC like mine if you are a single user. Uh, the purpose of having it run from a server is uh, so that you can have all the data, all the projects held in a, in a central place. So what I can see here is a list of projects that I'm working on at the moment. Uh, so having that is uh, the, the agility and the ability to check back through your projects and you know see which data are coming from where is uh, really, really important. Now, what's important to notice is that what we call as user management. So if you go to user management over here, you have got the administrator, which could be the senior quantity surveyor or contract manager, or the, uh, or the manager, and then under him, there can be a group of quantity surveyors, group of uh, junior quantity surveyors, and so on. So you can add as many groups as you want. For each of these group, then you have the option to control uh, whether they should read and write the projects, they can use the resource library or not, all of these different functions are there. So that's about the primary management uh, setting. Now on the left-hand side, I can uh, create a new project. I can import a project that I worked on before. I can, um, you know, some few, uh, few other options there over, over here. And then in options, I have got the setting. So in setting, what it does is that it allows you to set up different trades and their trade codes. And um, this is already a list of trade uh, along with its codes already set up or inbuilt in the software. So you can edit that or add as many as you want uh, based on your um, company company workflow. Now in the element code, then again, similarly, you can add as many element codes and elements as you want. Shortcut keys are available over here. You have got some other functions for display settings and stuff like that. Now let's go back to interface again. So we have got one primary tab, which is project. And then we have got another primary tab, which is library. So in library, we have resource library. We have BQ library. So let's go ahead with resource library. We have got the resource library over here, uh, which basically does what it does is that it, it stores all the resources along with their um, different um, uh, the, the unit rates, unit quantity wastage that you want to apply for that particular, for instance, raw material. You can do that. You have got the labor equipment, others, so different adjustments are there. So you can built in this resource library or you can import from another project that you did previously. So once you are done with one project, you add all of these resources in your system and it stays there in server for everyone to get access to that. Now that is quite useful when it comes to using resources from the server-based um, library. Now, a few other options are available here. You can provide them the profit overhead percentage and stuff like that. And then finally, you get to a point where you get the net rate of that particular um, category or the unit rate um, uh, item, bill item that you are working on, and you can provide the, some remarks there as well. Now, this setting can be built up from individual resources like raw material, labor, equipment. By going to each one of them, you set up that, and then you then you build up your unit rate over here. So you have got different subcategories: reinforcement, formwork. For each one of them, you have got the resource library available here, and this is like I said, can be built up once you are done with one project, two projects and so on. All right, so that's that's basically about the resource library, but then we have the BQ library or cost template, um, uh, cost plan templates library, in other words, if you like. So if I switch to this one, if I turn on this, then I have got a list of different categories and subcategories of um, element and, um, and the items. So you have got the frame, upper floor, and all of these different stuff like wall ceiling and floor. For each one of these elements, we have got then complete descriptions of 
uh, a cost plan BQ, or it's like a template. So you can use these templates for different projects if you are building up a BQ as a consultant. So these options are there. You can import from a project as well, like I said before, but this again depends on the built up unit rates that you build up in the in that particular project which you worked on so we'll got we'll get to we'll get to that in a while as well once you are done with the setting up of library we can then look at one of the projects so i've got few projects here i'm just going to go ahead and say okay let's start with contractor version of the software we have got both contractor and consultant version so we can switch between contractor and consultant version for different tools and settings now in here i have got a beautiful setup of baq so uh, the software allows me to build up a baq just by going there if i'm a consulting company or i can import a pdf baq so what i'm gonna do in this part of my presentation is that i will first go ahead with importing an existing baq excel file or and then i can go ahead for the pdf identification which is quite useful so and what i mean by pdf bq identification is that sometimes we get uh, you know scan pdf bq so the software will identify the scan pdf bq all the text from it and it will convert it into an electronic file to for you to get access to all the net rates you know amount all the market ratio of it so from the scan pdf bq you get to an electronic file you work on there but then the rates will then fit into that scan pdf and then you can send it to to back to the client or consultant so that's quite useful so now i'm gonna go ahead and start doing my first part which is a pdf bq identification and for that i'm gonna go ahead and say identify pdf bq identify pdf and then i can choose uh, right so my pdf bq should be somewhere here um import scan pdf I have got few different um, projects here, so I'm going to go ahead with the normal build. And what does the software do with this is that it basically gives you the option of choosing which pages that you want to import. Or you want to go for the entire BQ? Well, you can choose all of this. You can just turn on the tick mark, and then go ahead and choose language. What language the PDF BQ is? And if you notice, the BQ at the moment is a scan file. So I'm going to go ahead and hit identify. The software will identify all the text based on the headings so it will identify for instance item description unit quantity rate and more and based on that heading it will identify all the different text from the scan pdf and it will convert it into an excel excel or electronic file and then it will give us the access to do um you know calculate the quantities different quantities that i want and i can do the comparison between quantities i can then uh, put in my rates work out everything and then it will fit in back to this format uh, while i would like to send out to the consultant or client so that's that's really really in detail calculation wise when it comes to electronic bq now what's so important uh, about you know importing a scan pdf bq is that you don't have to go through uh, the hustle of you know writing it down or you know maybe um, referring back and forth you don't have to do all of this stuff now if you notice that as soon as my identification is done it shows me in multiple windows the original bq file that i imported in the software as well as the electronic BQ file. so if i switch between text it also switches here so i basically cross check uh, whether or not everything is um, perfectly identified but then you might be noticing that some of the text like for instance, drawings over here, it identified as something else. So it didn't identify it correctly. So how do you deal with this? Now, at this point, all the, the concept of identification is to turn it into an electronic file, but the, uh, the output result is gonna be in the same format as I mentioned before. So this is not quite important to have an exactly same or correct text over here, because all you are doing here is just, um, just um, putting prices or you know working out the rates for particular bill items for instance if i type in just some random um, prices here it immediately reflects here so if i click on that it shows me oh it's right there so 25 that i typed in it just adjusted there 
I can adjust this text wherever I want. So I can put in, let's say here, and I can put in somewhere here. Now for each of these bill items, I can just work out my rates amount, everything here, and it will automatically reflect to the original BQ file. And then at the end of this, we'll be able to produce the print preview whereby I'll be able to see this particular text. And I will be able to choose different uh, fonts and um, you know, as per requirement or as, as, as to match with the text that I have already in the BOQ. So I'll be able to match those fonts with that one. And this particular font is again from the uh, Microsoft Word um, that is installed in your system. So if you add any other fonts in your Microsoft Word, it will automatically get reflected here. And so once we do that, then obviously it matches with the text. So we are fine with that. We can then just send um, uh, uh, back to the client or consulting company. All right, so let's get back to here now. This is about the identification of PDF BQ. Now, once we are done with that, we can then go ahead and you know look into our calculation or project that we have done so far, and how do we build up something uh, from there as well. So what I'll do, I'll just delete them for now so that I can build up something again. Okay, yes, I wanna delete that as well. And this one as well, okay. And this one as well. Okay, so what I'm doing here is that I'm just delaying the quantities as well as the as well as the uh, rate codes. So we will look at the rate codes. What 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 does it mean? So now, as an example, I'm just looking at one of these uh, bill element. Let's say I'm going ahead with concrete works just to give you an example how it works. And I'm saying okay for wall, I've got 750 mm thick wall, and I'm gonna put in the quantities here. So there is a intelligent function which basically connects everything together and i'm going to get into that in a moment so if i switch back to my takeoff software which is task over here we did the calculation everything is done here. now i'm going to go ahead and go to the boq so in boq tab i have got then the similar bill here so how it works is that you have got flexible option of either customize a boq you can build up your own boq just by going to new bill new element heading and sub heading and item note, all of this different stuff. So you can build up something like that, or you can import an Excel BQ or um, cost plan template if you have one for task software. Now, the third option available with us is link this particular project with TBQ software, which we just looked at the estimation software. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this one so that we connect both the softwares together, okay? Now, this is quite simple. So what you need to do is you just need to provide the login information and the software knows exactly who is looking, who's, who's logging in at what point. So that's, that's really, really uh, quite audit, aud aud auditable. So I'm going to put in my uh, password over here. Okay. And I said login. Okay, and so once I log in, this basically connects both the software through a server, and I will get access to both the softwares and work back and forth uh, between the model and the cost estimation. So it connects all the departments together, in other words. Now, I was working on contractor demo project, so I'm gonna go ahead with that. And as soon as I open that project, it will basically connect both the projects and it will show me a snap of each of these. So what I mean by that is if I go back to my estimation software, I've got this particular bill here, which I again imported from Excel file, uh, just to save time, I did that before. I have got concrete works element here. Similarly, I can go to concrete works here. But if you're noticing here, we have got a lock symbol, which basically means that somebody is working at this point in the other software. So this, 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 uh, this is really, really important because uh, as a team, if you are working with many QSs, you, you know that at this point, you are working with this software, you know, somebody is working on that particular item in the other software, so you don't have access to do anything here. Yeah, but then it shows exactly who is working here. So if I double click on that, it shows that this particular person is working on that particular software. Now, what I will do here, I will just um, check in. So check in, check out function is available for for getting access to this or get rid of the lock symbol. So if I, as soon as I click on check-in, 
I would get access to this particular element from here. Okay, so I go back here. Okay, this particular window, check out, and then again, check in. Okay, now I have got the access to this particular element, mill element. So I can, you know, link the quantities here. So let's go ahead and link some quantities from our model. I'm going to go ahead and say view quantity by category, turn on my quantities. I see the quantities here beautifully arranged. What I need to do is I need to connect some wall quantities. So I'm saying, okay, um, just to give you an example, I'm just going to pick the total quantities rather than going through you know, each of these thicknesses. So I'm saying, okay, this is the total quantity. So you can drag and drop, or you can just double click. So let's say I'm going to go ahead and double click for that one, just a random quantity, just to show you how it works. So it automatically links that quantity. Now, if I would like to check, or if I would, you know, link one quantities multiple times, that is possible as well. But then the problem is that it will, how will I get to know which quantity is linked where? So I have an option called so association status, and it turns on and shows me which one are repeatedly associated in blue color, which one is just associated in green color, and all of these different colors. Now that that is quite useful because you don't want to miss out any of the quantities so you'll be able to see where are those quantities which are getting linked and which are not so everything is in details now from here again you can reversely check directly into the model like we saw before so that's quite flexible once we are done with the linking quantities i can um, switch between and i will be able to see from where the quantities came so in detail so the element type and a description and then we have got the calculation quantity what expression is there and then if you want to apply some factor in it and this is quite useful if you are linking one quantity to multiple items then you might want to apply some factors in it so you'll be able to apply that factor from this particular option now once you are done with this setting then you say okay save my work i link the quantities now save my work so what it will do is it basically the save all of these quantities and send it back to your server and you get access to the other software and if you have noticed we have got 460.631 for the first one and we have got 461 which is the wrong figure over here uh, but obviously if you double click it shows that it can it came from task software so we know from where it came at the same time if you want to if you want to set precision of like in, in detail so you can do the precision as well like 0.00, .00 whatever, uh, if you don't want to see the round figure, so you can do that as well. Now, what makes it so special is that it gives you a detailed view of who, from where the quantities came, and we'll look at that now. Now, we will quickly go to um, something that I call view quantities. So if I go there, uh, which is quantity details, and then it shows me that these quantities, for, for this one, it came from task software, okay? and then uploaded by who so that this this is my email id so i did that on which date at what time it was being updated so everything in detail and then for which project and for this quantity from where the quantity is in this is the volume that came from there uh, wall volume and then we have got the factor was there any factor applied to that everything in details and similar thing goes for trv so trv as uh, we mentioned before uh, is a um, quantity take of software for rebar and if you link some quantities from rebar uh, software then it shows you in detail here as well and it, it it works exactly same as task software and then you can import some excel quantity just by going to um, get some data from excel and then it will get all the data here so obviously i selected one excel file before that's why i'm just taking those data directly so I can switch between those steps and I can, you know, just double click on any of this. Sorry about that. I don't want to change that. But let's say in this cell, if I double click on that, then it takes that particular quantity there. So that's quite um, flexible again. Uh, you can export, you can delete something from here, overwrite, append different options are there. Now, if you want to do some manual quantities, that option is available as well, which is right over here. So if you want to do some quick calculation, like it's, let's say concrete, and counts, you know, what you want to do, you can then uh, apply the formula, it gets there. Automatically it calculates. You don't have to apply the formula, but it shows you what formulas are being applied. Uh, it works same as any other spreadsheet. Now, at this point, if you want to link this quantity, let's say, so I just say link. So it links over there. Sorry about that. I got rid of that quantities in the first place. 
I hope I can get it back. Okay. Okay, so that, that's basically the concept. So let's say concrete, okay, uh, uh, or column maybe. And then how many times, let's say two times and count in, let's say one, length is 300, width is again 300. So some quick calculation, you can, it can be whatever you, uh, you want to do that. So let's say this is the quantity, so if I say, link this quantity, it links out there. So if you have noticed the color of this each cell or in the corner of this cell, there is a symbol shows different colors. So we are getting green color here, which represents or which indicates that the quantities came from task software. So I know that these quantities are from task software, but then some dark green color, which basically shows me that it, the quantities came from Excel. But then we have got some uh, brownish color, which again represents that the quantities came from TRB software. So different color shows that were from where the quantities came. Again, if you click on that, you are getting the details uh, in here as well. So, uh, sorry, this one again from manual calculation. For, for TRB, again, there is another color. So this is again detail, um, quantity details. Now, when it comes to pricing, you can then define which item is what. So if you go to define prices, so you have got different options. If you want to go for rate only item, fixed amount, you can choose from there and you can then apply you know, something like um, lump sum amount and stuff like that. So you can define those things. But for normal bill items, you have got the access of a huge library for working out the rate. So we'll go ahead and look at that now. Sorry, so Mr. Simon. Simon. Yes. Can you raise your voice just a tiny bit? Um, we're having um, some feedback from a few of the, the viewers, if you don't mind. Yeah, definitely. No yeah. worries. Thank, Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. So what I was talking about is that as we connected the quantities, uh, let's look at the pricing. So uh, as I said earlier, you know, I have built up the, the rate library in the, in the server or the software. So you can import your schedule of rates from the Excel format, uh, if you have one, and the software will store that data in the library. And then you have the access to the built up unit rates, which is right over here on the se second tab. And then if you go there, then you get all the rate libraries and you built up basically the built up unit rates here based on what composite material, raw material, labor equipment that you applied. Now for each of these labor equipment labor, you have got codes. So if you just apply the codes and you can build up the uh, unit rate. You have got the flexibility of typing in or choosing from that particular um, um, resources as well. And if you wanna have a detailed breakdown of different labor types, then you have got different labor types. And if you just go ahead and say, okay, show me what are the types available for this particular line that I assigned. So to save time, I built up that, but if you just double click on that, it shows me in details that there is a base price of 24 and there's another one, which is another category. Obviously I didn't assign that, but you know, you can choose between these uh, different types of flavors for a particular, again, category of flavor. So it's, you know, it's a second level or the set category, you can say in other words. Um, you can provide the details for supplier states, remarks that comes in the labor. So in here, you can put in all of these different details and that will get reflected into your unit rate. As soon as you connect those labor equipment, um, raw materials, machineries over here. Now, if you're looking at detailed breakdown, you have got the quantities, you can apply them the wastage percentage, you have got the base, and then you can apply some factors if you wish to do. And then if you want to uh, uh, convert some uh, units that you can do as well uh, by providing the factors over here, you can then do the adjustment of rates. You can you know, do similar things for labor equipment and then total rate is over here, but then you're um, you know, providing some profit, profit and overhead and you are obtaining the net rate for each of these um, unit rate items. Now, once you are done with that, and then for these categories, you can then be able to set this uh, or link this with the bill of quants of, um, of your bill items. Now, if you want to do some price analysis, and this is again quite useful when you want to do some price analysis throughout your project. So at any point of time during post contract, you can use this um, to see monthly or quarterly how the prices are 
you know, going up and down in a beautiful graphic, uh, graphical view, obviously um, in a graph format, but obviously I don't have a project which is running from quite a long time. So I don't have that setting here, but this again depends on the initial setting while initiating the project, you need to provide the location if you wanna see for location wise prices, if you wanna see monthly changes, quarterly changes, all of these yearly changes, everything is in detail for particular projects. So that gives you a graphical representation of how the prices are changing. So that is quite useful again. Uh, you can import some resources directly from the resource library just by going to batch import from resource library. And you can obviously, you know, create some category, subcategory over here under each one of them, then you, you build up the unit rate. So once you are set up with this, then let's go ahead and uh, do some pricing for our bill items. Now, for each one of these bill items, I can go ahead and um, hit unit rate details. And this basically brings up that particular uh, built up unit rate option over here. So what I can do here is that I can go ahead and hit import from built up unit rates. And it will take me to that particular window where we saw the all different unit rates um, that we built up. Now to connect those unit rates, for instance, I'm saying, okay, as a concrete item, um, this has got, as an example, uh, let's say 15 concrete grades. So all I need to do is rate code that I need to apply. So I just, uh, I just drag and drop that and then it automatically applies that net rate over here. So similarly, you can do for each one of these. So if I, as an example, if I do this, like uh, as 35, 30, um, 30 C, you know, the grade of concrete, different grades, if I apply different positions, so I can do that. I can apply multiple as well if I want to do that. And then I can do adjustments right from this window while applying as well. So this is just like if you do apply the codes that gets in and uh, that's quite flexible. And you can use this particular window in multiple windows. And ideally, ideally we do this over two screens. So, but obviously it's not presentation friendly. So bear with me on that. So once we connected the rates, then we can have a detailed breakdown of rates from where it came. So I can see for this one, it has got this much raw material, labor, equipment, everything is in detail. So everything that you can think of about the pricing that you did in the build up unit rates got reflected right over here. Now, there's another way to see that as well. So if you just click on this explode option, so it shows you how much um, is for material, labor, equipment, everything is in detail again in breakdown. Now, to, after working out this, then it arrived at a net amount of this much, then you, but then you are providing some markup ratio, markup range, and then you are getting the total amount right over here. Now, at this point, you can create new uh, unit rate right over here. Uh, that can be a manual, you know, creating um, rate, and then you can do all of these different percentage and apply the factors and provide the descriptions for that particular unit rate. And then you can add that particular unit rate again. You can send it back to the built up unit rate for your future projects to, to use in filter future projects. So that option is there again. Now, once I'm done with the pricing, then I can assign some trade codes. And you might be wondering, oh, well, then it's, it's kind of a, you know, going through each of these bill items to assign the trade codes. It's a little bit lengthy way of doing that. But then again, you have got a filter option available here by which you can filter out which descriptions that you want to see on the screen and apply the same trade code so you just go ahead and apply the trade code or you can choose from the drop down and again this one came from the setting that we do initially in the software and it remains always same in in your in your um, database or in your server now that filter option is there now coming to the element code similarly if you want to do um, some elemental analysis or you know stuff like that so you then apply the elemental code. Similarly, you can apply the filter option and so many different options are there. So yeah, once you are done with these two, um, you still have got few other options available. I'm not going in much detail with that. And you can add as many columns as you want just by going to extend columns. You can name them. You can, you know, and this is quite useful for multiple quantity columns BQ. Some standard forms are there, obviously. Uh, that format is quite useful if you want to use multiple quantity columns. And then like tower A, tower B, tower C, like that. And then you can have another BQ format like for terrace housing or for instance, lump sum BQ, all these different formats are available in the software. So we can get 
uh, all these different formats or built up all these different formats in the software as well. Now, once we are done with the rate and pricing, then we can uh, go ahead with some analysis. But before we do that, I will just quickly show you how how our calculation is been uh, is been um, linked to the model. So, if I go ahead and say, okay, this is my flow at the moment, but then I'm turning on my whole building, and I am turning on all the elements that I want to see, and and I I can say, okay, all these quantities are linked from this particular model, but if you want to like i said if you want to do some edits here you can't do it at the moment because it's working someone is working at this moment for this bill item uh, for you sorry sorry for that bill element and you can you know check in and out for cross-checking those things but when it comes to analysis you have got trade analysis you have got element analysis so by trade you can do analysis after you assigning the trade course obviously by applying the filter options that i talked about and then you get a detailed breakdown of your quantity, your net amount, markup amount, and what is the weightage for each of these trade costs. And that's quite, quite, uh, you know, detailed analysis that we can think of because, it, you know, weightage is quite important because we then calculate the percentage wise, what it is should go for which trade. And it's, it's, it's really, really uh, detailed. Um, but then you can provide some floor area over here and which will give you the quantities or, or sorry the cost per square meter of floor area so if you want to break it down for uh, you know floor area wise then you get the cost per square meter over here as well you can export this into excel and then you can refresh obviously if you make any changes in the in the bill of quants to get it reflected here just refresh that now let's go ahead with the element course so elemental again you can do the analysis for substructure superstructure upper floors you know, as you assign the elemental code over here, you get to see all of these different costs and um, uh, and, and and their cost code, sorry, elemental code and their cost element of the total cost element. Again, floor area you provide there, and you get to see the floor floor you know per square meter floor areas. What is the cost? So very detailed analysis over there. Now. Uh, this particular section allow us to do adjustment in the total total amount of the project. So at this moment, we're looking at uh, 24 million uh, 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 amount as, as the cost of that particular project. Now, if I want to do some adjustment as, as a uh, markup ratio, I can do that here. I can do markup ratio here, or I can just put in the total adjustment, and then it will get applied to each of the of the bill item. So it will get spread it all over. So we don't have to do the adjustment by going to bill like that. But if you want to do that by bill item wise, then you still have got the option over here. So you can do that as well. Now, if I apply something, it will get reflected everywhere. Now, that option is there. And this is kind of useful while deciding at the final stage. Now, interim version, compare version, this is again, uh, saving your work. And what I mean by that is, uh, for instance, you know, as a QS, I or, or as an as an estimator, I worked on Monday on some you know some works on Monday in a particular project. And on the next day, then I wanna get some some of my uh, data from my previous work or from my from my pre, from Monday, let's say on Tuesday. Now, what I need to do, I can go up to different versions if I save this as a version, and then I'll be able to um, grab data from all of these different uh, versions. So what it does is that it basically saves a snap of your work for future use. So if I click on interim version and I say, okay, new interim version, so I've got a few other versions. I'm just gonna go ahead and say, okay, version four, so save this as a project, yes. So what it does is that it basically, as I said, you know, save as a snap of your work. And then in future, you'll be able to import all of this data from get data from other versions. So you'll be able to select that version from where you want the data and you get all the data back into your, your um, BOQ. I mean, if you want to grab some. Now compare version, this is again quite useful why you want to compare different bit, uh, between different versions um, in future. If you saved you know, different works and what are the uh, changes that you have been made, you can then look at that as well. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to my takeoff software and I will, I will actually check in here and I will, 
I will come to something called variation as we all know. Now, at this point, and this is my quantity as we all know. Now, I will go to column display and I say, okay, turn on all of this. And then I'm saying, okay, this is my current quantity that I worked on. But then I'm saying, okay, save this one as a baseline. So I'm saying, similar to the other uh, software version four, let's say. And then what it does is that it, it saved these quantities, which is my current quantities as a baseline quantity. So if I make any modification, any variations, addendums, you know, that, that changes this value, but my baseline remains same. So let's have a quick look at that. If I go back to my current flow, okay, which is my ground floor over here. Now, let's say as an example, the client didn't like this wall. He wants to get rid of the wall. I'm just going to delete that. And then all I need to do is just run the calculation. So I'm going to run the calculation and I say, okay, do the calculation for this particular floor as I made some changes in that particular floor. Or we can do the calculation for all the floors. But calculation is recommended to make the changes in the BQ. So once the calculation is done, then I can go back to my BQ and I'll be able to see the difference between the quantities. So my previous work quantity was 461.63, but now it dropped down to 457, which is because I did some modification in the model. So it's really, really useful when you want to work out the variation quantity. So you can save this one as variation quantity, um, variation one, and the next time maybe variation two, three, four, all of these different uh, version of variations you can work out from here. Now that's about variation, but then if I save this work, and let's see how it goes with the estimation uh, because we made some changes. There was some modifications. Now let's get back to my similar element. I have got the quantities here. As you can see, my previous version has got 460, but now it dropped down to 457. And we can see here it as 457. So what I need to do is I need to just go to analysis and then I say, okay, interim version, let's save it as, um, I don't know, maybe version five, okay. So this is version five, okay. Now we made some changes, this is version five. Now we're gonna compare between versions. So compare between version four, version five, click compare. So like I mentioned before, software will do all, all the comparisons between the bill items, calculations, quantities, everything based on the modification that you made. So if you look at the results of my comparison, you have got for this particular bill, it shows in star mark for this particular element. And then it shows in star mark, the heading, subheading, and then the bill items uh, in, in, in star marks. Okay, there are some changes been made. So what are the changes been made? I can then able to see here. So it was 461, now it is 457. The amount was this much, but now it's this one. And then what's happening with the total amount, it also got changed. So the, the whole idea is that as soon as you get any changes in the model, you know, variation at later stages. So you just adjust the model and everything gets reflected to the, um, throughout the quantities to the rate code, to the, sorry, to the net rate, to the total amount. And it changes the total amount of that or total cost of the project. So everything is interlinked. Everything is server-based. You just need to do modification in the model and press calculate. And this takes away a lot of hustle of you know, going through different uh, uh, spreadsheet to find out where you need to do the adjustments and stuff. So it shows in detail in star marks. So that's really, really useful and quite powerful tool as well. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and show you another function which is like subcontractor. So you can add subcontractors and you get access to the BOQ right from here and you, you will be able to assign subcontractors just from this window. So you create new subcontractors, uh, you can remove and stuff like that, but then you can send inquiry from here and it will just send that particular um, bill items that you selected, but then it will allow the subcontractor to only price that. You won't get access to the, the, the quantities because the quantities cells will be locked. And then there is again protection of um, password protection is there. So it goes through the eTender platform. So through eTender platform, it gets to the, uh, the subcontractor, let's say, and there's a particular password attached with that. So uh, on the other side, subcontractor will then uh, be able to send back his pricing and we can then receive the quotations from here. So this is quite back and forth, work, all interlinked 
through internet. Now, if I go to uh, print preview, and um, which is kind of, you know, we covered that more or less, but then it's, it's kind of the final thing that we can do. So we can print all of this that we worked on as, um, as the build items and stuff like that. So we can just print in right from there. And that would basically print out our worked out rate as well as worked out um, quantities and everything in detail. But again, remember that I talked about the PDF scan BQ. In that case, also it works out pretty much well. Now, th this is basically about the version which is we looked at as a contractor version of the software. But now I'm going to go ahead and show you the consultant version, which has got a few extra features because obviously in consulting company, you have got a lot of other stuff to do rather than just um, quantifying pricing. So in, in consultant version, we'll be looking at uh, different import functions and uh, different uh, you know, identification. So let me go back here and I will close this project for now. And I say, okay, close. And I can change between the versions like I mentioned before. So I'm gonna go ahead and say consultant version. And I will open one of the projects, let's say this project, uh, any project that I can work on. So now we are in a cons uh, consultant version, as I said. Now to import and export different, um, or to build up a, a cost plan, and uh, then you have got different options available. So you can identify your previous projects with historical data from your Excel uh, BOQ, or you can go ahead and say, okay, get data from other projects that you worked on in software. Then you can get data from other versions that you saved before, but then you have got also access to the BQ library. So it gives you the total BQ library and you can find out just by you know, typing in what, what, what is you're looking for. So let's say, you know, I'm looking for some concrete descriptions that I want to add in, in my cost template. So as soon as I press find, it shows me the concrete items. Uh, oh, I made some mistake here, so concrete. So uh, it, it gives me the concrete items and then I'll be able to switch between all of these different items and I can just import by item or I can import by category. So I can say, okay, import all of these categories for my projects. I can import all of these categories. So this is one option. We've well, got another option, which is get data from Excel, then um, get, get quantities from Excel. So that's again, another, another way of doing that. But then if you want to do it from other projects, so it shows you in a window, uh, which are the projects that you work on. So you can get data from all of these different projects just by clicking on that. And you can just copy and paste either the element or you can copy and paste only the bill item if you want to get from another project that is also possible. Now, obviously I mentioned before, you know, uh, it's, it's quite recommended that you can work in multiple screens and that's quite ideal because you, you, then you don't have to go through, you know, you don't get confused between all of these tables. You can, you know, adjust this wherever you want to put it just by, you know, taking it where you want to fit it. Okay, so that's basically about building up the cost plan, but then we have many other options available, which is like uh, build. So if you want to customize a bill or if you want to build up a cost plan, so you can go ahead with a new bill and that then you can name that bill obviously, and you can then go ahead with preliminaries. So it will give you access to the preliminaries items right over here. You have got then the, the um, prime cost and provisional sums. For each one of them, you can create the heading, subheading, and an item, and then you can also work out the breakdown of your description. So, you know, sometimes we see in a PC and, uh, and, and provisional sum or preliminaries, we might have some breakdown of quantities, so we can then adjust those by going to here. So all of these different data can be input here, and then you, you press OK, and it takes you to that breakdown. But in normal bill, you can just go ahead and say, okay, I can and do the calculations. A um, few other options like uh, filter options that we went through before and uh, clipboard and some other functions available to check in and out, stuff like that. And then we have got cost estimate and this is quite useful when you do the analysis. So you get to get access to the unit rate details. And similarly that we looked at for the, for a particular, um, for, for the contractor version. So it again gives you access to the unit rate details for consultant version as well. You can get data from Excel and this particular option is useful when you have got the rate library 
uh, in an Excel format, and you don't want to you don't want to bring it up to your database, or you don't want to put it in the software. You can still use the Excel uh, rate library just by going there and picking up those um, um, rates or resources that you want to use. Um, analysis again, similar way. So evaluate. So in here, what you can do once you are done with the um, with your um, excuse me, once you are done with your uh, cost plan, uh, then you can publish it right from here, and then you can go ahead and say addendum version. So what it does at the moment, I'm not publishing it, but if I go and say publish, so it will publish and it gives me a warning sign that you won't be able to do any edits after publication because obviously it just sent out to the contractor and then you will be able to do the addendum version. So you create many addendum versions and on the other side, the contractor will then get access to that particular file because you're sharing through a, through, 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 eTender platform. So the consultant will get a BQS file format and you are sending out the tender document as BQT format, which is just a generic tender document. And then the consultant will then apply that specific password like I talked about before, and he would get access to there and then he would price his things in eTender platform. And it's quite robust way of doing it. And then it's quite detailed in eTender platform. We might be able to see in some other session because of time constraint, I can't really cover that. Uh, but in that one, you will be able to do detailed comparison or evaluation between different um, contractors as a consulting company uh, in the eTender platform. But uh, then again, you know, interim version, compare versions are limited. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay, uh, let's look at some reports format that we can build up being a consulting company. Now you can customize or you can build up your own format by creating edit but then you have got a few standard formats available um, for the bill item and then for the summary so you get all the summary details here and bq here and what's so great about the software is that it calculates everything automatically so you don't have to worry about the summary calculation you know page wise total nothing at all so it, it calculates the page wise total it adjusts all of this into the uh, breakdown summary to the summary uh, to the you know total summary level so all of these different options are there now if you go to edit you have got you know you can adjust those columns just by breaking just like we do for excel or any other spreadsheet you have got then the layout setting you know top header foot all of these text formats what you want um you, again we looked at the text format before and then you have got the formats of how do you want to see the bill numbers you want to see the element numbers, the page numbers, how do you want to do that? You have got the access here as well. You have got some general settings here. So uh, just skip the heading, uh, heading or subheading so we can do that. Or if you want to show them the, what's it called, the raw, you know, raw total or the line spacing, all of these different, you know, pagination or, um, or you know, setup for the, for the you know, line, line width or the or thicknesses all of the different formats are, are there so you apply the intact as well in addendum however you can then set up what kind of format that you want for addendum so what it does is that i'm not going in much details because then i have to evaluate it um, for different contractor and you know send it out and publish and do that and so it's quite kind of a lengthy way of doing that because it addendums come up after the publication of my tender document so in addendum what i can do is i can set up the format let's say plus one so plus one the contractor will get to see that it's plus one for that particular page number so it, he gets to know okay exactly in that page the changes are being made and then it shows in star marks for that particular bill item where the changes have been made so that format comes under the addendum annotation and uh, addendum setting now, once you are done with that, then you can say, of course, the save, and you can obviously provide some, uh, uh, you know, you can modify the page numbers, which is like what you want to see at the top. Um, you, you, if you want to see these details, then you see uh, over here, um, sorry, down here, where it is, down here. And then you have also got some uh, primary summary in the summary page, what you want. So that, show, that gives you the, uh, flexibility of choosing what you want in your particular format. 
And then you can provide page breakup, which is quite useful when you want to send some of the elements or items or heading or subheading to another page. So you can just say page breakup, it pushes those items to another page. But obviously, if you do the proper setting in the, in the format, then you don't have to worry about that. Uh, so this is in a nutshell about the software's report format. But then from here, you get access to publication and then addendum, you know, undo the publication, work for addendum, setting up for addendum, send it out, all these different options are there. And you can then export it either in PDF or in Excel format. And like I said, if you send through the UTMR platform, then it's going to uh, go as a BQD or the, the, uh, the, the tender document. So it will go in that format with a password protected file. And then on the other side, contractor will be able to download that, price it, use the password, get it back. So all of these different um, options are available. Now that's about the report in, um, in, in, the, in the cost estimation software. But uh, now before I conclude, uh, obviously I'm at the, uh, at the end of my software, um, estimation software. Before I conclude, I would go to, okay, I would go to reports for other software, for the takeoff software. So if you just go for takeoff software without you know, taking the uh, estimation, detailed estimation or tender management software, then you still have got the flexibility of just pricing the items right over here and do everything because at the moment it's uh, connected with the estimation software. That's why I don't have the option for total amount rate and all of these different um, steps. But in case if I just disconnect that, it will pop up, but then it doesn't give you uh, access to any resource library. You can just type in the weights. So that is there. Now let's go ahead and quickly look at the reports as a final, final, uh, final part. So I've got different report formats. And then in that re report templates, I have got then, you know, if you want to look element wise, some reports like this, the volume area formwork and uh, for different elements. But then if you want to see a quantity, you know, expression, which means the calculation or, you know, the computation that took place for a particular element. So you'll be able to see a detailed breakdown of calculation that we looked at, you know, in the software itself, but now we'll be able to see it in a report form. And as we can see for, let's say for column one, this is my setting. So, uh, sorry, this is my calculation that we, uh, that, that was been carried out. So for volume, for year format, different calculation, how did it calculate with the location or that particular location. So if you want to find out that location, it is again, from the software and be able to detect where are these uh, by clicking on reversely check in the model function. So it gives you in detail how, how much quantity was been calculated by applying those formulas and then the total quantity has been worked out. So it's, it's quite useful if you want to um, cross refer or if you want to share the data with someone uh, with all the details. So that's report format is there. Nevertheless, you can adjust all of this report formats just by going to this edit icon, or you can create a new report if you want. Similar thing goes for if you want to do some um, analysis and uh, you know summary level analysis as an index or so column. You got the quantities, flow area, and all of these different you know trade, uh, trade by grade. And again, you can do all of these different reports right from the takeoff software. So that's that's. Uh, that makes it you know quite flexible um, from the fact that you are getting all the elements in a particular format but then you are getting all the details in a, as a report and then you can export this one into excel just from here you can directly print from the software itself and you can set up some quantities what you want to look or which element that you want to look so you can set up that and then you can set up also the floor range which floor you just want to go ahead with or you want to go for the whole building so all these different um, index summary level reports are available as well now that's basically in a nutshell about the takeoff software and we looked at the estimation software we also looked at how these are all interconnected and how we do the variation addendums you know all these different um, calculations just by adjusting the model so you know if i if I compare with our traditional workflow, whereby, you know, as a QS, I've been to your shoes. So I, I do understand how we 
do things in a traditional way. So we go to Excel file and then we do adjustments in every pages and stuff like that. But here you do the adjustments here, you get access to give permission to who does what. You, you get access to the lock system, you get access to the security pass, password or, or the lock system of the tool drawing. So all of these different, you know, as, as, as far as the security is concerned, everything is, um, uh, everything is de detailedly connected. Now, now, at this point, I would just say that, you know, as a QS or an estimation engineer, it will be quite great if you look at the software in terms of, uh, you know, calculation or adjusting the model and do a lot of um, reports and, uh, you know, directly use the e-tenders, for instance, e-tender is quite useful, but then in e-tender it's quite, like I said, you know, it's quite, um, quite detailed and it, it covers a lot of stuff. So we might be able to look at it, you know, sometimes later in another session. Um, this brings me to the end of uh, my presentation and uh, of Kibikos Task, which is takeoff software and TBK software, which is again estimation software, but we still have got TRB, which is for rebar, which works pretty much similar, but then you have got the rebar in details with PBS, the shapes, everything is in detail with calculation formulas, different standards like uh, British standards, American standards, all of these different standards are there. And then you have got uh, uh, the, the other, other software, which is TME, which is for mechanical and electrical takeoff. So that software also works out pretty much similar to this one. And it basically identifies uh, all the elements and builds up the 3D model based on the legends of your um, MEP drawings. So all identifications are done automatically as far as your drawing, it, it really comes down to the type of drawing that you're using. Now, if you have got a CAD drawing, then obviously the software identifies everything and builds up for you. But then you have got a PDF drawing, an extra step of creating an element is required. And then if you have a B model, you just import the B model right from here. You can import an IFC file, but if you wanna go for a Revit file, that option is also available with the software. And as far as I understand, or I know in the market, this is, I think this is the unique software which allows a Revit model to do edits on a Revit model by importing it. So you basically get to import the exact Revit model and you do adjustment in the software itself and you go ahead and press quantity uh, calculation. Uh, and, and one extra feature with that is that you, as soon as you import the model, you have got the flexibility of checking the calculation, sorry, checking the scale of your model and do the adjustment with your families, linking all of these different stuffs, everything comes in. So quite useful in terms of B-model as well. If you wanna share your model, you can just save that as a picture and share with your team or your you know, site team um, as per the progress of work. But there's a useful tool, which I would quickly show you as a conclusion, uh, which is quite useful for post-contract stages. So you, for instance, for wall, if I, let's say as an example, if I want to subcontract this particular area of wall um, as an example, so I can then just select these walls and I can say, okay, this is in construction zone that, and there is a particular flow zone, the subcontractor name is there. I have got then the schedule start date, actual start date, actual end date, schedule end date, and claims, and then payment on which date that I made. So this will then give me a detailed breakdown category wise in the quantities, which subcontractor was assigned on which day, how much quantity was there, how much you worked out, everything is in all, all in details and according to uh, payment as well. So all are connected um, as far as uh, the post-contract works are considered. Um, with that, with that, now I would uh, conclude my part and uh, now we'll be opening up our floor for Q&A. Um, 